Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So today what I'm going to be doing is what I'm going to try and do is listen to in full the artists and songs for Supernova 2022, which is the competition whereby the winner will get to represent Latvia at Eurovision. So there are 16 songs. Now I know that other YouTubers have reacted and reviewed to the snippets. So like a recap, which is totally fine. Like it's important to kind of get initial feel for a song and you can get that from like a snippet, right? Um, but I don't really want to be beholden to a comment just based on a snippet because I'm sure there are a multitude of songs in Eurovision which I love and if I just listened to the snippet I may have had a different opinion. So yeah, am I going to do this? I think I am. <laughs> okay, so the first act that we've got is Bermudu Divsturis. That was not even probably even accurate. I wanna get drunk, I wanna get high, I wanna make love with you tonight. Uh, this song is <laughs> probably not the best message for children. Wants to get drunk, wants to get high, wants to make love to you tonight. I mean, but also great rhyming, right? I'm bad, cause I'm bad, cause I'm bad. Awesome, cause I'm Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. You're bad. That's a real bad thing to do. What's he saying? This is the night where I what for you? Bowl for you. As in like a bowling competition. <laughs> Uh, I, I've heard that melody before. They've taken that from somewhere else. That's a Mika, right? Um, relax, relax. Take it easy. Um, copyright. I think this is a joke entry, right? Relax, relax, take it easy. Um, it does sound very similar. This is the night when I bob on you. I mean, I do like it. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying though. This is the night I'll bowl for you. I mean, I'm singing along to it. That's a good sign, right? When I bowl for you. <laughs> right, I'm sorry, this is a joke one, right? We boys from Atfia, we are bad. Okay. <laughs> this is a joke entry, right? Can someone please confirm this? Okay, I quite like this. It's harmless. It's got a catchy melody to it. Okay, I think that's quite a good start, right? I quite enjoyed that. I did. <laughs> I'm in a good mood though, so that might be a reason why. Um, someone needs to confirm if this is a joke entry because um, if it's not, <laughs> and they're taking themselves very seriously and they think they're really bad, I used to teach in uh, <laughs> the middle of London. <laughs> I could give you some examples of what bad is. Right, okay, so next we've got Marcus Reeve, uh, If You're Gonna Love Me Now. I'm reading here now, yeah, submitted a song every year between 2014 and 2020. I hope this is good. You know, if you're entering your seventh or eighth song, you know, we want to see a Sana Nielsen, right, from Sweden. We want you to do well, Marcus. So let's see how this goes. You shine so bright. Giving me hope that we're gonna be just fine. Lyrics are really cheesy. Okay. Every time you're leaving, I get a Ah, oh, so every time you leave, I get high from these feelings that you should be mine. Ah, <laughs> oh, very sickly sweet. In the UK, we would say that's very cheesy. And I struggle how hard by my own. 
I really want this to pick up. I'm rooting for you, Marcus. Be your man until the end. It was going okay. I mean, it was a bit repetitive, but it ends with a lyric that does not rhyme. Oh dear, Marcus, I feel I'm not going to love this. I feel nothing will ever be the same again. Unless the world is dead. Unless the world is dead. <laughs> I'm living to see your face as it obviously is missing. Unless the, unless the world's dead, then that's fine. Because <laughs> I won't see your face. If you're gonna love me, gonna give it one more chorus. And if I don't like it, gonna me, I'm gonna move on. Mine. Uh, no, I can't listen to it anymore. Sorry, Marcus. I was really, really rooting for you, mate. Um, You'll be mine. It doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> oh, no, that's... I already know I don't need to listen to the last minute of that song. That's such a shame, Marcus. Okay, so we've got Aminata. Now, I know Aminata, obviously, because I actually follow Eurovision. Not so much Supernova. And so, obviously, I recognise her name and her face. So, she's represented Latvia before uh, successfully, right? See, for me, I actually think that that song is kind of a love-hate song. Like, there are people that really, really, really love it. In fact, actually, some of my closest friends who are Eurovision fans, Love Injected, that's the song, right? Absolutely loved it. I thought it was okay. I thought it was elevated by the staging, what she was wearing, the whole kind of three-minute production was really, really good on the stage and it elevated for me, but the studio cut, I wasn't particularly that crazy about. But I totally understood why it qualified for the final. I totally understood why it did well. There was a market for it. Um, and then I know that she was the songwriter behind Yousts. That was better. <laughs> that was the year after. Um, and again, I think that's the last two times in the last 10 years that they've qualified for the final. So she's got the Midas touch when it comes to Eurovision for Latvia. So I've got high expectations because Latvia are in a long drought for a qualification. So if there's anyone that can kind of pull them through and give them a bit of luck and get them back into the final, it's going to be Aminata, right? Uh, I have high expectations, Aminata. I can have you right by my side, baby, you did nothing so She's coming back with a ballad. We just faded for too long. Okay, so already the lyrics of this song feel much more authentic than Marcus's. <laughs> I'm letting you go with a heavy heart, but I'll be I like this. Okay, I wasn't expecting a ballad, uh, but I am pleasantly surprised. I mean, she's got the vocals to perform it off. It's just with power ballads, when, they, when you send them to Eurovision, they can either be a hit or they can be a miss. And there's so many kind of fine tuning when it comes to sending a ballad. We know that she can sing live, tick, so that's a good thing. If you're gonna send a ballad, it helps if you can pull off a strong vocal. And it's not about just performing it well live, it's having that strong, kind of hitting that high note. You're kind of gonna have to hit that high note or have kind of that powerful ending, which she definitely has the ability to do that, right? So when she did it, I remember loving the staging and everything about the staging, her makeup, her hair, her dress, the light, the lighting, the, the staging of it. So if this is going to win and at, at this moment, based on one minute and 15 seconds, and, and Latvia is going to be sending, I don't think they were going to hit a dance break. I think this is it, right? This is a ballad. Then, yeah, they're going to have to sit in a room and come up with some clever ideas about how this is going to be staged because power ballads just on their own. You need something else, right? When we too deep, we grew apart, I like the production. I 
okay, this is, it, the lyrics, if you listen to it, it's actually quite sad. <laughs> and again, if I kind of take my mind back to Love Injected, I actually, one thing I haven't comment, commented on is her as a performer, not just her vocals, but I remember her performing that song like her life depended on it. Like the performance was great, her facial expressions and her ability to perform the song, act out the song. I'm putting my trust in Aminata that she's going to be able to perform the message of the song because it, it's, I'm letting you go. It's it's sad, right? You find somebody. I don't want to, it's not the same sound as Adele, right? But Adele's in, she's back and this kind of like laid back with a piano, sad message, good vocal, is in. There's a place in my heart, it's only yours. I feel bad I've been talking over this because actually the lyrics are very, very good. I'm letting you go. I know, told you, it needs it. Okay. Right, interesting. So look, at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's going to listen to that and say this is a Eurovision 2022 winner. You can't. I mean, there's nothing um, spellbounding or unique about that song. But at the end of the day, we need to, each country has priorities. Latvia's priority has to be about getting back into the final, right? Aminata is a tried and tested act that's already done well for them i think this song could do well but like i said this song alone on its own it's fine like you know it's it's melodic it's nice it goes on for three minutes but obviously the selling point about this song is her her vocal her ability to perform and like i said if this gets selected they need to go into a room and think right how are we going to allow this song to stand out because when you've got that power ballad yeah because there isn't that kind of magic in this song. I mean, you know, you take your back, take back to Duncan Lawrence when he won with that song. That was a slow song, but there was something magical about that song. You know, without him, without his performance, without that music video, just that song alone, standalone, it was, it, there was something quite special about that song where there's not so much with this one. That's good. I quite liked it. And like I said, I was talking over it, but really near the end, I was thinking, Sugar, I actually should have listened because that song. The lyrics actually is well written. The lyrics of that song is good. Like I said, very different to Marcus' song too. Okay, so now we've got Bujan's He, She and Me. Good vocal. What I'm really appreciating midday on a Saturday is the lyrics <laughs> of Supernova thus far. Do re mi? I mean, I'm okay. One, two, do re mi, one, two, three, now you see ABC. I mean, poetry. This is a joke, right? I mean, I'm looking at the image with those backing singers. Those are wigs. Not a joke, but it's not taking it seriously, right? It's in on the joke. Family. I didn't even know. I kind of just knew that was coming. Going under, like thunder. Yeah, this is, this isn't a serious entry, right? But I assume they're in on the joke. Well, I'm glad this is fun, as I have 16 seconds to listen to.
Okay, I think I've got the grasp of the song. I don't think the song's gonna go anywhere else. I mean, it's harmless, it's fun. It's Euro pop. Oh. Oh, I didn't mind that. <laughs> I mean, it was fine. Like, I, I had every intention of stopping that at some point, being like, I get it. But, um, yeah, it, I just, it carried on until the end. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's it's okay. It's Europop. It, it wouldn't do very well at Eurovision, obviously. As I have to listen to 16 songs, I'm really, really thankful that that song was, uh, was fine. Um... I mean, fine, right? It wasn't offensive. I mean, some people might be offended by it. It's Euro pop, right? It's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, it's okay. It's not a good choice for Latvia, but I enjoyed it. Okay, so now we've got Citizeni, Eat Your Salad. This is going to be a song about the meaning of life. I can already tell. Jazzy. Instead of meat, I eat veggies and pussy. Like them both juicy, I ride my bicycle to work instead of car. All of my groceries are divided <laughs> by weight and stored in glass jars. Got my reusable bag that swag my flex, my flags are always that is my jam. Um, I need the song to continue, but I, I don't know whether I heard the first lyrics accurately. Um, maybe I did, I don't know. I don't really want to say much on my YouTube channel because. <laughs> It's a respectable Eurovision <laughs> React Review channel. Why do I feel this is gonna win? <laughs> Can I just say, I ha can't, I haven't listened to the rest of the songs. I really, really feel that this is gonna win. Um, I need to check out how the winner of Supernova is selected. Is it inter uh, as in like, is it public or is it jury? Is it a bit of both? Because if it's public, if this was in the United Kingdom, I promise you, and it was the public, <laughs> we would vote for this. <laughs> being, green is cool. being green is cool. There we go. Ah, save the planet. See, there is a message of this song. I knew it. Being green is cool. Obviously. Bend over and shake that peach. I, 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 I think I'm right. I think there is some um, a bit of blue in this song. Yeah. Eat your veggies. Pick with me. I, I'm not even judging the quality of the song. I literally am just obsessed with the lyrics. And what I mean by that is that's what my attention is drawn to. Hey, are they going to be able to get away with this song at Eurovision if it gets selected? Are they going to have to change? <laughs> I actually think this could do quite well. You know it will, you know it will. It might get annihilated by the juries, but there'll be a good televote for this. It's got a message that's important for humanity. And there's some other stuff in there for the younger generation as well. There's something in here for all generations. Okay, I think the song that I most enjoyed so far would happen to be City Zenny because we must eat our salad and green is cool and we must respect the message of that song. Okay, so next we have Inspo. A happy place. I love the tone of her voice already. Back to being serious now. Oh. 
it's sort of refreshing and see it's my way to happy place. I like that. It's more mature, more radio friendly. This song reminds me of when I was in New Zealand. There's a lot of when I was in New Zealand a few years ago now. There's a lot of acts, musical acts that sounded like this. I think I like this. I think I do like this. I mean, it, regrettably, when you're competing against 26 songs in the Eurovision final to stand out, the song alone, I've got to be careful what I say there, because there's some very kind of mundane, underneath the radar songs that have done okay at Eurovision. Ooh. They've got Rocky. I wasn't expecting that. I went, I say Rocky. It was now drums. I don't want people to be like, this is not rock. Okay, so if it's finishing with this, I can already kind of see what's going to happen with the lighting and the staging. Oh, I don't know if I like... Oh, that did not end well. If that gets selected, that definitely needs a revamp because I don't understand the point of ending with that rock element because it didn't go anywhere. Um, I was okay. I was kind of okay up until that point. I quite liked it. Her voice. I love the tone of her voice. Um, that's okay. I don't know. There might be something you can do with that song. The way that that song is at the moment, it it, it makes no sense to me. Really okay, like so now we've got Mix Dukas. First love. Oh, I love a piano. Saying right down. Oh. Okay, I'm already very interested. Sounds nice. First love hurts the most. Hurts the most. Boys. When you both get hurt. Okay, the production. No. Oh no, that's a real shame. I do not like the production in the background. Okay, so I've given him the first third of like, come on, mix. mix. I don't like that production. What? No. Ah, uh, Father, forgive me for my sins. Always a little bit dubious about bringing religion into Eurovision. God, me for my okay, I'm going to stop that. Um, nothing to do with the fact that he's brought religion into it. It's fine. I uh, really, really, really liked Slovenia's Amen last year. So uh, that testifies that I'm not totally against it if it's a good song. Um, I'm all about the melody. Uh, there is no melody to this anymore. Um, I don't know who he's paid to do that production, but it does not sound good. I don't know. It's almost like there was an idea here in the beginning third kind of sh testifies to that, but they have butchered it at some point along the line. That is such a shame because his voice is really, really good. I love that kind of gravelly uh, rock ballad tone to his voice. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to listen to the last third. I don't think I need to. So sorry, Nix, not for me. Okay, so now we have Beatrice Heaslier, um, On the Way Home. Where is this going? I 
I need to see this live on stage. I need to see this live on stage. Um, I actually really, this is the kind of sound that I do listen to. Um, we've got that kind of 80s throwback as well with that kind of disco element, which seems, is I think this is going to be a huge feature in a lot of national finals, isn't it? Um, we heard it in Benidorm Fest, um, and I think we're going to continue to hear it. Uh, so um, I don't mind it so far. I like it. It's very radio friendly. It feels like it could be a album track on Kylie's Into the Groove album, which is fantastic. I don't know whether this song would have made the cut, um, but I'm saying that in the sense of it is an album track. It's not necessarily a single. It's not the one that you release to kind of publicize your album, right? There isn't really so far anything special going on, but um, I'm going to give Beatrice Huesler the benefit of the doubt. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's pleasant. It's a very familiar sound, isn't it? Um, What will change the song is how it's performed, I think. I do like this sort of sound. This is the sort of sound that I do listen to. It is quite good, actually. It's these trickly bits, this musical interludes. What's she going to do on stage? That's what I want to see. How's she going to feel these... Uh, that's a sick... See, so that's the thing with songs. You've got to be... I'm always a bit dubious. You've only got three minutes on stage and the song can't be any longer than three minutes. So when musical interludes go for quite a long time, it makes me feel that you're filling in a song um, to make up those three minutes when really in my head you should be cutting it down that musical interlude is quite long so what they're going to be doing on stage to feel that like it, you could hear this on the radio there is quite a modern sound to it ironically because it's a throwback sound but it's a sound that is in i quite like it i quite like it actually I actually quite liked that. That was quite good. Um, I'm intrigued. I want to see that live. I want to see that live. Uh, I think that could be elevated on the stage live. It's not a bad song. It's the sort of sound that I normally listen to, so I quite like it. Okay, so now we have the coconuts in and out of the dark. Very dark and somber. Very jazzy sound to her vocals. And Amy Winehouse's sound. Feel like I should be in like a jazz blues bar, right? For the drinks, chilling. This a live band in the corner. See, Latvia 2018 sent Laura with Funny Girl, and I was a huge fan of that song. Same sort of speed, tempo, sound S. What's that? What's that part of the song? Was there a ghost in my house? Was it? I think there is a time and a place for this sound. Just a little bored. It just, I, again, with these sort of songs, you just never rule them out. Never rule them out. Take Portugal this year. With the right sort of staging. It's just, honestly, I've learned over the years, even before you get to those dress rehearsals, never, never judge a song by its colour, because when it gets on the stage, it can massively be elevated by staging. I don't know. I mean, it's nice, it's pleasant, like I said, there's a time and a place for it. I mean, I don't know whether 
supernova is going to be able to elevate this on stage. It might be elevated at Eurovision. Because it's a credible sound that kind of, I think, would be rewarded by juries. But um, I don't know. It was a bit dreary, wasn't it? No. Sorry, coconuts. I'm going to got to be brutal. There are 16 songs here. No. Okay. So, song 10, Cato Promises. Worse. Predictable lyrics. She gonna be able to sing that live. It's computerized, right? Myself and you. Oh, I mean, it's cute. Oh, I break my heart before I break my promises. She's a girl to be trusted. Girl, you could take home to mum to be very proud. Our full worst. Mm -hmm. We're my own plus one. I, I quite like it. Uh, I don't like this bit, and regrettably, this is the chorus, isn't it? I actually think everything about this song is actually quite good. But the chorus. And I don't want to be that Eurovision fan that was like, this or. This needs a revamp already before it's even been performed at Supernova. It needs a, something to happen with this chorus. But I like the cutesy, sweet... Oh, it's over. Is it over? Wow, so she didn't even want the three minutes. She's like, nah, I don't need three minutes. I don't need three minutes. I need two minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, all right. I actually quite liked it. Um, it was... I, li I like that kind of cutesy, melodic sound. I mean, again, it's not exactly groundbreaking. Um, it's fine. Um, I, don't, I quite like it. I quite like it. I think I would probably want to listen to that one again. Uh, but I do worry about that live. And moreover, I do think the chorus lets it down. Okay, so we've got Elena Glusunova. That was like a Welsh accent. Say it again, Shane. Alina Glusanova. Okay, we're being. We're going back to a more. Um, okay, stop, 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 before I say anything more. I don't think I'd be able to differentiate. I don't even know what kind of Latvian sounds like, but I'm assuming it is different to Russian. Obviously, Estonian is extremely. Um, I could pick Estonian out just through Eurovision when I've heard songs in Estonian. There's something beautiful about Estonian language sung. I'm always captivated. This already sounds Estonian, so this might be an education for me if someone would like to comment below. Is this Latvian? And therefore, as a result of that, is Latvian and Estonian similar? Because whatever language she's singing in, it sounds like a song from Estonia. And I love it. What happened to the production then? Come on, Aline, I'm rooting for you. Because it sounds beautiful. I feel like I would play this to my child if they were restless and I wanted them to go to sleep. <laughs> Some nighttime music. There, there now. Listen to Alina. <laughs> there is something weird in the music production that's jarring. What that that switch up does not sound right. I mean, it's okay. It's cute. 
they are doing. Oh, it's quite melodic near the end, isn't it? Was it Brigitte from Estonia a few years ago? It sounds a bit like that. Bridget, Brigitte. Okay, Alina. Um, okay, it's nice. It's, it, it's, it, I would worry about it if it won and went to Eurovision. I, I don't think it would do very well. Um, I think it wouldn't see Latvia out of the semi-finals, but it was pleasant. It was different. Okay, so now we've got Mess Jus Millum, Rich Itch. I will give it to Supernova. They do have an edge over Benidorm Fest, and that is lyrics that are ridiculous. Is this going to be another song that's not serious? Messi Smith and what are you doing to me? I've got 16 songs to listen to. It's like a marathon. And I've hit my brick wall. <laughs> they say that in a marathon, but don't they? Four miles to the end, you hit a brick wall. This is my brick wall. Oh, a Western feel now. Okay, to get, I mean, the problem mess use Millum is, regrettably, I'm listening to 16 songs and I've already heard a few songs that are jovial in their essence. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, it's fine, it's fine. Um, but I'm surprised there's so many in Supernova. I don't know, there's an audience for these sort of songs, aren't there? I don't normally rave about them. It's fine. It's fine. We've got Linda. Pay my own bills. The production sounds a bit cheap. Like she's recorded it in her garage. I don't like that electronic thing. It's really off-putting. Some quite R and B and soul about this. The production's cheap, regrettably, um, because there is something quite good here, I think. Well, good vocals in there. I think this needs to go to a different music producer. I think there's something they could do with this song. It's, this, this is a song that would be helped if Eurovision brought back a live band. It sounds a little bit dated. When I was growing up, there's a lot of songs that sounded like this. That kind of like Joss Stone sound. I think this has been quite good here. I mean, I've heard this sound before, done better. I think there's something missing. I assume the production. I don't know when the chorus kicks in, it's okay, production wise. But I do like that kind of. Okay, I do quite like the the empowering message in that song, right? I didn't mind it. I can kind of see what that song's trying to do. I don't think it quite pulls it off. There's potential with that song, but unfortunately, it's probably not where it should be to try and pass this national final at this stage. Right, so we're now with Realm Plans. plans. Nowhere to go and I'm drowning. It's like the male version of... Um, 
Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Very much the male version of Avril Lavigne. I'm not a huge fan of this repackaged American sound, but I will say there will be an audience that will pick up their phone for this sound at Eurovision. Not big enough to win. Maybe enough to pull them out of the semi-final. It's not the sort of sound that I would listen to. I mean, like I said, I stand by the fact that there is an audience that will pick up their phone for this song. And it's large enough, I think, to pull it out of the semi-final. Actually, I don't know. It's actually not bad, is it? I think I have to be objective. It's not the sort of sound that I would listen to. Okay, yeah, it is short, but we get it. He wants he wants to be the plans for someone's weekend. Um, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Zelma, sporting a fringe. Is it a fringe? Yes. Okay, we've got that jazzy sound again. Got a bit of supernova fatigue now. <laughs> My eyes are going. <laughs> oh, Zelma, do something, please. Do something. What well, I'm sing, say something. Wow. Again, if I'm in a jazz bar, a blues bar, with a drink on ice. Taking in the ambiance of the room. Zelma, you're my girl. But not song 15 of 16 songs. <laughs> I will get to the finish line. Zelma, you're not helping me. What? This song isn't doing anything. Okay, take that back. Well done, Zelma. Bring in that electric guitar. It's a shame because like, I understand that this is a credible sound and I've been a bit naughty really. I think if I started with this song, I think I would have been fine. Because you know, these sort of songs, it, the best thing to say is, oh, it's not my sound, I wouldn't listen to it. Because you understand that it's credible to a point, right? Oh, Zelma. Okay, I, this is going to be the third song I'm going to do this to, sorry. I've got supernova fatigue. I'm, I was I was banking on you, Zelma, to get, get me through. How could you do it? No, I'm joking. Um, okay, I mean, yeah, fine. I, I don't particularly, there's nothing going on in that song that makes me want to listen to that for the full three minutes or listen to it again. Right, Patrick's Peterson, Can't Get You Out of My Head. Now, if this is a rendition of Kylie, which obviously it can't be because it has to be an original song, um, then I'd say the best will last. If not, I will hold out judgment. Feeling like I'm stuck in time, but traveling at speed. Coming to reality. He seems quite young. I was hoping for something more. Youth friendly. So we're back to the fourth verse. Same tempo. Plodding along. Nice. Inoffensive. Patrick's just doing his thing. Little piano there. A drum. Patrick's. I was rooting for you. Okay. No. No, 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 no. It's really repetitive. It's not good. <laughs> 
It's not good. Um, if I okay, if I'm putting my hat on in regards to impartial, objective, wanting Latvia to come back to that final with a vengeance, I think their best chances are with Ziti Zeni and Aminata. I think with Aminata, it, even if she wins, you can, I don't know, if we see it live, then something might click. Like I said, with this sort of song, it's elevated with the performance. You just need to see what ideas she's going to bring to that stage. You know she's going to bring that vocal and, and you know she's going to perform well, but what else is that song going to deliver in regards to the visuals on the stage? It's really dependent on that. But I think, trust me, I mean, the British public is one of 42, 43 um, televotes that will go and contribute to the winner of Eurovision. I can already tell you that the UK would give, <laughs> the televote would give 12 points to eat your salad. Um, so uh, you won't get no <laughs> Um But I don't know, like, I think... You know, I'm never, I, I mean, it's not going to be a song that I'm now going to download. There we go. I'm going to say it safely. I, 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 it was pleasant. I laughed. It was great. But on a serious note, I'm not going to listen to it again. But I think it's a good song. And I know that there's going to be tons of people who are going to vote for it. Um, and it might be more of a risk than Aminata, but sometimes it's worth taking that risk. But for me, I mean, out of those 16 songs, if Latvia are going to send a song that they kind of want to compete again to get back into the final. Those two are the ones that seem to stand out for me. So it's up to Latvia. It's Latvia's choice. Um, but I got through all of those 16 songs. <laughs> Go me. Um, yeah. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think. Please do comment below. And as I said at the beginning, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. Please do click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post Eurovision videos. And please do like, share the video if that takes your fancy. So therefore, until next time, stay safe.